Hello friend, welcome back to my channel. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. It's Tim here and in this video I'm going to guide you through the steps to create this autumn inspired farm landscape painting on Procreate. This piece was inspired by a drive my mom and I went on recently and the colors outside were so beautiful at sunset so I really wanted to bring those rich earthy colors into this painting. This is definitely a beginner friendly painting as well and we cover a lot of different types of painting techniques in this video. Upcoming here are the hex codes for the palette of colors that you'll need to be able to paint along with me, as well as the brushes which are all in the default library except for the damp brush. But I do have a video up on my channel on how to recreate this brush from scratch for the iPad, so if you need it definitely go check it out. The first step of this tutorial is to screenshot this trace outline layer and insert it into a square size canvas and then to trace over it into a blank layer. That way you have a guide to follow. Please feel free to take any breaks that you might need along the way. And when you're ready, let's begin. All right, so let's get into our tutorial. Let's turn our trace outline layer down to about 10%. Then let's add a new layer and put it below the trace layer. Now using the fifth color in the first row, let's fill this entire canvas in with this light yellow color. Let's add a new layer and switch over to using the paintbrush now with the soft airbrush, full size and full opacity. Using the fourth color in the first row, let's place a thin stripe of this color about three quarters of the way up to the top of the painting. The top of this stripe too will reach about the top of the barn. Next, using the third color in the first row, let's place a stripe of this color on top of it just like this. Then repeating the same step with the second color in the first row, and then using the first color in the first row, let's place a final strip of color at the top of the painting like this, which should give you four stripes of color. Then we're going to use Gaussian Blur and blur this layer to about 35%. Let's add a new layer, and now we're going to paint the stars. Let's switch over to using the paintbrush now, using the technical pen, about 50% size and full opacity, using the fifth color in the first row. Let's paint little dots all over our sky area, placing as many or as little stars as you would like. When you're happy with your stars, let's make a copy of this layer. And then on this copy layer, let's use Gaussian Blur and blur this layer to about 14%. Then let's make another copy of this original star layer, and using Gaussian Blur again, let's blur this new layer to about 11%. And then let's merge all of our star layers back together. Let's add a new layer, still using the technical pen, and now let's paint the moon. Using full size and full opacity, still using the fifth color in the first row, let's paint a circle over the moon outline just like this. And to get a perfect circle, let's draw a circle shape with the stylus, close the shape up at the end, and then hold the stylus down to smooth and autocorrect the shape. And then while still holding down, tap the screen again to make it a perfect circle. Next, let's fill it in with the same color. Now using the eraser tool with the hard airbrush, which is found in the airbrushing section, let's trace over the cutout part of the moon, painting another circle just like we did before, and then holding it down to create another perfect circle. And then let's erase the extra color. This is definitely my favorite way of creating a crescent shaped moon too with no overlapping edges. It just creates the best moon shape. Then let's add a new layer and put it into soft light. Switching back over to using the soft airbrush now with the paintbrush. Using the sixth color in the first row, let's paint a thin strip of color just along the top edge of the canvas. And then using Gaussian Blur, let's blur this layer to about 32%. Next, let's turn the opacity of this layer down to about 92%. Then let's add a new layer and put it into Overlay. Using the fifth color in the first row, let's paint a thin strip of color in the center of the painting, which should be just around the horizon line of your painting. And then using Gaussian Blur again, let's blur this layer to about 52%. Then let's merge all of our layers except for the trace layer back together like this, which then completes painting our sky. Now let's paint the ground and the trees. 
Let's start by using the sixth color in the first row. Let's add a new layer and switch to using the soft airbrush with the paintbrush. And let's lay a thin strip of color that will be slightly above the center of the painting. It will kind of cross over the barn outline area like this. And then let's fill in the bottom half of the canvas with this color. And then using Gaussian Blur, let's blur this layer to about 35%. Next, let's add a new layer. And in this section, we're going to be using the water pen with up and down paint strokes in a zigzag motion like this. And then we'll be blending them out with the water pen as well with the blending tool and with the same paint strokes. And then you'll see me doubling the layer at the end to make them more opaque. Also making sure to vary the paint stroke height along the way to get the illusion of smaller trees and taller trees. So let's switch over to using the water pen now with about 30% size and full opacity. Still using the sixth color in the first row. And on the left side of the painting on the tree outline area, let's start using our up and down zigzag paint strokes of varying heights to create our trees. And we're going to follow the outline across the painting like this. And then let's fill in the bottom half of the tree area. Now using the first color in the second row, let's change our brush size too to about 15% size full opacity. And with this smaller brush size now, let's lay a thinner strip of color with the same paint strokes on just the top area of the trees, which will add a lot of depth and color to them when we go to blend them out. Then using the second color in the second row, Let's randomly place this new orange color with the same paint strokes on random areas of our tree outline just like this, using as little or as much of it as you'd like. Now switching over to using the water pen with the blending tool, about 17% brush size and full opacity. Let's blend the top row of the trees out using the same up and down zigzag paint strokes as before, which will create a really nice transparency between the trees and the sky. And then let's move to the middle of the trees and blend them out in the same way, moving down the line. And then we're going to repeat this two more times, which will create the illusion of different rows of trees and really add a lot of depth to the background. And with the bottom row here, since this area is getting covered up, I'm just kind of roughly blending it in with the ground color. And then we're going to repeat these same steps for the right hand side of trees. When you're happy with your trees, let's make a copy of this tree layer and turn the opacity of this new layer down to about 76%. Then let's merge these two tree layers back into one, which brings us to painting the back field. I'm going to turn our tree layer off for just a moment so we can see it a little bit easier. Let's add a new layer and switch over to using the hard airbrush now with the paintbrush, using about 28% brush size and full opacity. Using the second color in the third row, let's outline the left side of the back field like this. and then let's fill it in with the same color. Then using the third color in the third row, following the rows on the trace outline, let's trace a little bit of color on each line, just like this. And then here on the right-hand side, we're going to repeat the same step, using the second color in the third row to create the base, and then using the third color in the third row to create a little line here. Let's add a new layer and put it into overlay. Still using the hard airbrush, let's use the sixth color in the first row. And let's paint lines on top of each line like before, and then in between each line so there will now be double the amount of lines there were before.
and let's turn the opacity of this new layer down to about 15% and then let's merge this new shadow layer back onto the field layer. Now let's switch over to using the water pen with the blending tool, about 10% brush size and full opacity. And here I'm going to turn our tree layer back on too so it's easier to see again. Now using the same up and down zigzag paint strokes that we used to paint the trees with, only making them just a little bit shorter and quite a bit smaller, we're going to start blending out the top edge of our field, going down the line, creating a little bit of texture and blending all of our colors together like this. And when you reach the end of the top edge, we're just going to move down a little bit and then blend the field out in rows, repeating the same steps as before. And for this, we do want a little bit of texture, so don't worry about making things too smooth. And we're going to repeat this for the entire field area. And once we get this all blended out, we're going to shrink our brush size to about 7%, still full opacity. And we're going to add some detail textures along the top edge like this, which will really help to further break up the hardness of this edge with a little bit more transparency between the field and the trees and add a little bit more depth to the background. And when you get your details added, we're going to repeat the same steps from the left side now on the right hand side. I wouldn't worry too much about this side being perfect either because most of it's going to get covered up. We just want to make sure it looks similar. And when you're happy with this side, that brings us to painting the barn. I'm going to turn the opacity of the trace outline layer up just a little bit, that way it's easier to see. Now using the second color in the second row, and let's switch over to using the technical pen again with the paintbrush. Let's add a new layer, and I'm actually going to put this new layer over top of the trace outline layer, that way it's on the top and a little bit easier to see. And let's outline our entire barn area like this, fully closing each shape. and then we're going to fill each shape with the same color. Then I'm going to turn the barn layer off and let's add a new layer. Using the fourth color in the second row, let's outline each of the silos, closing each shape off like before. And then let's fill all of the shapes in with the same color. Now I'm going to turn the barn layer back on, so they're both on again, and now I'm going to merge the silo and the barn layer together. And now I'm going to move this layer back underneath of the trace outline layer. Let's add a new layer, and I'm actually going to put this new layer on top of the trace outline again, still using the technical pen. Now using the fifth color in the second row, let's outline each of the silo shapes like this. Then using the third color in the second row, we're going to outline the barn again. And it's not necessary to outline the bottom of the barn this time though. Now I'm going to move this new layer back below the trace outline layer and then turn the trace outline layer back off. Let's add a new layer and switch over to using the soft airbrush, about 50% brush size and full opacity. Using the third color in the second row, let's place a little stripe of color in each of the three barn shapes like this. And then making my brush size just a little bit smaller, about 27% or so. Using the fifth color in the second row, let's place a little bit of this color in each of the silo shapes now. Now using Gaussian Blur, let's blur this layer to about 14%. 
Now using the damp brush, about 5% brush size and 60% opacity with the blending tool, let's lightly blend out this new color over the entirety of the barn and the silo areas, adding just a little bit of texture to each of them. Let's add a new layer. Now using the Narinder pencil with the paintbrush, using full size and full opacity, using the fifth color in the second row again, let's outline the barn edges just like this. And the Narinder pencil tends to be a little bit wiggly, so I would recommend turning the stability up for straighter lines. And then holding the line down at the end of your paint stroke will actually automatically smooth your line for you. And then I'm going to paint a line connecting the left corner to the right corner. And then I'm going to paint an X in the middle, just like this. And then let's paint a cute little window here in the center. I'm then going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 38%. Now let's merge all of our layers, except for the trace outline layer back together into one, which completes painting the barn. Now let's paint the grass area. So in this section, I'll be using what I call the sad face highlight, and it's probably my most used paint stroke. And it's basically just a sideways sweeping paint stroke that is slightly downturned on both ends to create what I think looks like a sad face. So let's turn our trace layer back on. Let's add a new layer. Now using the soft airbrush with the paintbrush, about 12% brush size and full opacity, and using the sixth color in the second row, Let's lay a thin strip of color at the edge of the top of the grass area along the barn like this. Then let's switch over to using the damp brush now with the paintbrush. Using about 4% brush size and 68% opacity, using our sad face highlights, let's lightly lay down some of this color with long sweeping paint strokes. And because the damp brush does trail off a little bit to create a nice gradient, I didn't really pick up the brush a whole lot here when I was laying down color, really allowing the brush to do the hard work and let the color trail off towards the bottom. Let's switch over to using the blending tool now with the damp brush, about 8% brush size and 18% opacity. And let's lightly blend out our grass using the same paint strokes. Let's add a new layer. Now using the paint brush with the damp brush again and the first color in the third row. About 4% brush size and 66% opacity. Let's lightly lay a little bit of this highlight color on top of the grass now using the same paint strokes as before. And then using the blending tool now with the same settings, let's lightly blend it out. When you're happy with your blending, let's add a new layer. Now let's switch over to using the water pen with about 10% brush size and full opacity. Using the first color in the second row, let's fill in the bush outline with color. Then, using the sixth color in the second row, let's place a little bit of this highlight color inside of the bush outline just on the top edge area, like this. Now I'm going to turn the trace outline layer off. Now using the damp brush with the blending tool, about 4% size and 47% opacity, using circular scrubbing paint strokes, let's lightly buff and blend out our bush. And when you're happy with your blending, I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer to make it more opaque. And then I'm going to merge the two back together. And then I'm going to merge the bush layer and the grass layer back onto the main layer so it's back into one. Now using the blending tool with the damp brush, about 3% brush size and 57% opacity. I'm going to lightly buff and blend the line out between the ground and the barn layer like this. And then I'm going to blend over the grass area, just very lightly kind of softening it up a little bit. 
Now let's make a copy of this main layer so there will be two of them. Let's switch over to using the blending tool now with the water pen, about 3% brush size and full opacity. Now using the same paint strokes that we used for the field and for the trees, using short up and down zigzag paint strokes, we're going to add some texture to our grass area. And I'm going to blend in rows again as well, starting on the left hand side and working my way to the right. Repeating this step until the entire grass area has texture. And I wanted to mention too, here I'm not being too careful about making the textures look super smooth and pretty from this distance. You won't see individual blades of grass from this far away. We just kind of want to create the impression of texture. And then in a moment here, we'll soften it up a little bit. When you're happy with your grass, let's turn the opacity of this top layer that we're working on down to about 67%, which will help soften up the grass a little bit. And then we're going to make a copy canvas and put it on top. Which brings us to painting the front field. Let's turn our trace outline layer back on and let's add a new layer. Now let's switch over to using the hard airbrush again with the paintbrush full size and full opacity. Now using the fourth color in the third row, let's outline the entire front field area. Then let's fill in the bottom part with the same color like this. Now using the second color in the third row in between each line on our trace outline, let's lay a strip of this brown color in between each line. After these are painted, I'm going to shrink my brush size to around 50%. Now using the fifth color in the third row, let's paint a stripe of color over top each line on the trace outline, which will now be in between each of the brown lines we just painted. Now switching over to the water pen with the blending tool, about 10% brush size and full opacity, Using the same short up and down zigzag paint strokes, working in rows from left to right like before, let's add some texture to the field. And when you reach the end of the row, we'll move down to the next row and repeat the same steps working our way across until the entire field has texture. When you're happy with your textures, I'm going to turn the trace outline layer off for just a moment. And then along the top edge, I'm going to add some singular zigzag paint strokes just to add some detail textures here and there. And then I'm going to repeat the same step randomly across the rest of the field, adding as little or as much as you'd like. And when you're happy with your field details, let's turn our trace layer back on. Which brings us to adding our final details and highlights. Let's make a copy canvas layer. And then make a second copy of it so there will be two layers. And let's put the top of the two copy canvas layers into black and white. Now let's add a new layer and put that layer into overlay. Now using the fifth color in the first row, Using the damp brush now, about 5% brush size and 73% opacity. Let's lay a little bit of this highlight color on the top of the grass area like this. Kind of using our sad face highlights again. 
And then in the light stripes in the front field, we're going to place another strip of highlight color in between. And then in the same areas of the back field as well in the lighter stripes. Let's put a little bit of highlight color on the top left side of the barn like this. And then on the left side of the silos. Let's put a little bit around the moon. And then we're going to switch over to the blending tool with the damp brush, about 12% brush size and 55% opacity. Using a really light hand, let's buff and blend out all of our new highlights, just kind of smoothing everything over but not completely blending it into the background. And it will look a little funny until we remove the black and white here in a moment. When you get your highlights blended out, let's turn off the black and white layer. Then let's turn the opacity of this layer down to about 38%. And I think I want these highlights to be just a little bit more dramatic, so using hue and saturation on the highlight layer, let's turn the brightness of the highlight layer all the way up to max. Let's add a new layer and put it into soft light. Let's switch over to using the soft airbrush with the paintbrush, full size and full opacity. Using the sixth color in the first row, let's lay a thin strip of color on the left side edge, the bottom, and then the right hand side edge. And then using Gaussian Blur, let's blur this layer to about 29%. Then we're going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 44%. Let's add a new layer. Still using the soft airbrush with the same color, let's repeat the same step as before, only with this layer being in normal mode now. Let's place a thin strip of color on the left side, the right side, and then the bottom. Then using hue and saturation, we're actually going to turn the brightness of this layer down to about 16% to make it black. And then using Gaussian Blur, let's blur this layer to about 26%. And then let's turn the opacity of this layer down to about 17%. Now that we have our vignette created, let's make a copy canvas layer and put it at the very top above the trace outline. Let's add a new layer and put it into Overlay. Now I'm going to open the Color and Hue tool and choose the color white because I forgot to put it in this palette. Using the hard airbrush now with the paintbrush, full size and full opacity, let's paint a circle in the middle of the painting over top of the barn area in the field right about here. And then using Gaussian Blur, let's blur this layer to about 72%. Let's add a new layer and put it into Overlay. Now switching over to the damp brush again with the paintbrush, about 6% brush size and 67% opacity. With a light hand and long sweeping paint strokes, let's lay some highlight color over top of the entire sky area, really concentrating it more heavily at the base edge of the barn and the horizon line. Put a little bit on the top of both left sides of the silos and now just brightening the horizon line area up just a little bit more. Let's place some on the top edge of the grass area like this and I am adjusting my brush size down just a little bit just to make it a little smaller. Let's put some on the top edge of both fields. And then switching over to the blending tool with the damp brush, about 11% brush size and 24% opacity. Let's lightly buff and blend out all of these new highlights, kind of softening each of them up but not completely blending them into the background, leaving just a little bit of the texture behind. And when you're happy with your highlights, let's turn the opacity of this layer down to about 69%. Let's make another copy canvas layer and put it on the top. 
Then let's make a duplicate of it so there will be two of them again. Which brings us to painting our final detail. Switching back over to the blending tool now with the water pen, about 3% brush size and full opacity. We're going to add some singular detail flicks to the grass area and pull out some more detail textures in random areas. Repeating this step across the entire grass area, dragging the light color into dark areas and dark color into light areas, just to add some more depth throughout. Then let's turn the opacity of this layer down to about 64% and we're done! Now let's sign our painting. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting my channel. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you should paint this painting and are on Instagram, I would absolutely love to see it, so please tag me at Timstar Studio. I love the holidays and have been working on a couple of holiday themed tutorials coming up so I'm super excited to share those with you soon. And if you'd like to continue painting, I have tons of other tutorials up on my channel so definitely go check those out. And if you like this video and want to see more content like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps my channel out and I'll see you in the next video friend. Happy painting!